All right, welcome to episode three from chapter 2A. And in this episode, we're gonna cover something extremely important. We're gonna go over how monomers are put together to make a polymer. We're also gonna learn how does a polymer get broken back into the monomers. So what we're gonna learn about today is going to be a concept called dehydration synthesis. And then we're gonna learn about its sister or its complementary or opposite chemical reaction called hydrolysis. All right, so this could be a little bit longer than normal. We'll probably go over 10 minutes on this one, but this is a really, really important episode. So I really want you to pay attention. And what I write on the screen here, I also want you to write this in your notes. Okay, what this chapter is about, it's about macromolecules. Okay, macromolecules are big molecules. The word macro just means big. And remember, a molecule is anything that has a covalent bond in it. All right, so remember covalent bonds you share electrons. So the, the atoms that are involved in a covalent bond are going to share their electrons, okay? Very strong bond, okay? Biomolecules are all macromolecules. So these are big molecules. And remember, bio means life. So these are the molecules that are involved in living things. And they're made of individual subunits, okay? You wanna think of like a train. So like here's one box car, it's connected to another box car, and this connected to another box car, so on and so forth, until you get to the train. And each of these train cars is a subunit. And we're gonna talk about how do these different uh, subunits connect, like what a train would connect to. All right? The subunit of a macromolecule has a special name. It's science, actually. You know, we have to name everything something special. Okay, it's called a monomer. Okay, the word mono simply means one. And then mer means part. So you've got one part. So a subunit, like over here on our train analogy, the train is one part of the entire, or I'm sorry, the train car is one part of the entire train. Now, what if I had two monomers connected together? That's called a dimer. The word dimer means two. So this is two parts. Two monomers joined together. If I had three or more monomers joined together, that would be called a polymer. Poly means three or more parts. So oftentimes we just say that as three plus monomers. Okay, Macromolecules, and remember when we say macromolecules, we're also talking about biomolecules. These guys are all polymers. So our biomolecules are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and the nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. Okay, every one of these are a polymer. They're each made up of subunits that are connected together. Okay, now up here in this picture, we have monomers, single little parts, and they're gonna go through a process of polymerization. Polymerization is simply the process of making a polymer, it's simple as that. And we are going to go over that in more detail on our next slide. So let's brush those away, and we're going to move on to the next one. Okay, polymerization is the process in which monomers are used to form dimers, and then dimers are, are going to be formed into polymers. Okay, chemical process, we're changing the chemical bonds. Now, another name that you're going to see for this is dehydration synthesis. And I personally like the term dehydration synthesis better because it's actually telling you what's happening. Okay, the dehydration part, that simply means take away water. And then of course synthesis, that means to make. So if you put these two words together, let me fix that. If you put these two words together, you're taking away a molecule of water in order to make something. And I'm going to change my color over here. Let's go to this green. Okay, so as you see right here, dehydration, take away, and synthesis means to make. Now, a really old-fashioned term for this is called condensation. I don't really like to use that term at all because when we think of the word condensation, we think of fogging up a window, fogging up a mirror, etc. But really what condensation does mean is that you are taking away water out of something. All right, so... Um, I don't like to use that term. So I'm going to use this one almost exclusively. Uh, if you have the Parrot textbook, 
um, they're going to use this term a lot. So if I were you as a student, I'd get used to using these two terms interchangeable. Right? Polymerization and dehydration synthesis are also called an anabolic process. Okay, so we're going to keep it simple. Okay, this bolic part, that simply means a chemical process. But we want to focus on the ana part. Ana means to make, okay? And a great way that I use this is I just use the girl's name, Anna, and basically I remember is that Anna is going to build something. Whoops, spell build right, okay? So Anna builds. She's building new molecules. Now, in order to build a new molecule, that is going to require energy. And I'm going to, I guess I'll just spell energy here. Okay, E-N-E-R-G. I screwed up that M. Okay. It takes energy for Anna to build something. So if you're going to build a house, wouldn't you spend a lot of energy hammering the nails, sawing the wood, etc. that. All right. So any kind of anabolic process is going to build a new molecule and that takes energy. Okay. We've also heard uh, in, the, in the sports world, anabolic steroids. Okay. Uh, this summer, a couple of baseball players have received 50 game suspensions because they were caught using anabolic steroids. Also, Lance Armstrong essentially admitted that he used it during his Tour de France years. And what happens when you use these anabolic steroids is that you are tossing in a chemical that promotes the building of muscle fibers. And these muscle fibers are essentially proteins. So an anabolic steroid is a chemical that will cause the monomers that are used to make uh, muscle protein, they will go through dehydration synthesis and you're going to make more muscle. Now, if you remember in an earlier screencast, we talked about functional groups. Functional groups are the things that we add to a hydrocarbon to give this carbon a special flavor, new properties. And these functional groups are used in this process. So let me brush this away and we'll show you what it works. Okay. So what we have here, we have an imaginary um, polymer, I'm sorry, a monomer right here. So this is a monomer, you can see it written right there. And it has an OH group attached to it. And that is called a hydroxyl group. Now this hydroxyl group is going to connect with this hydrogen sitting off the side. Now remember, this is called dehydration synthesis. Take away water to make something. So we're gonna take these two functional groups we're going to remove them, and there's your water molecule. Right. That's going to connect. We're going to have an empty bond there. We're going to have an empty bond there, and that's going to form the new bond. Now, this new bond also represents stored energy. We'll just use a big E for energy. Now, as we told you on the previous section, that this is an anabolic process. Anna built something. So Anna already had a short polymer. Uh, see, one, two, three. It has three subunits connected together. So that's a polymer, because poly means many. We connected a new monomer. You know, it took a little energy to put that together. Uh, there's your new bond with stored energy. And then this water is simply a waste product. And it's actually one of the reasons why you, you have to go to the bathroom occasionally. All right. Okay, let's move on to the opposite which is called hydrolysis. Whoops, let's go back here a little bit. There we go. All right, hydrolysis is a process in which you use water, so the hydro part refers to water, which is H2O, and then we have lysis, and lysis means to break. You ever hear of Lysol? Lysol is a chemical disinfectant that breaks open the bacteria or the germs to kill them, okay? So remember, we're broken. A water of molecule is used. We are using water to make to break something. So let's write that down. Okay, using water to break something. That's what hydrolysis itself means. All right. right there it is, and there it is again. Okay, now this is a catabolic reaction. Remember, the bolic part refers to a chemical process or chemical reaction. The cat part means to break. So a great way to remember this is the cat breaks stuff. So if any of you guys have a cat at home, 
you know they climb on stuff and they're going to knock it over and it's going to break it. So the cat broke something. Now, whenever you break something in the world of chemistry, you are going to release energy. So this is the exact opposite of dehydration synthesis. In dehydration synthesis, you took in energy to connect two items and you're going to store that energy in that new chemical bond. In a catabolic process, you're going to break the bond and that's going to release energy. Okay. So if you want to think about this, dehydration synthesis, you just went out and you bought a bag of Oreos and you ate every single one of them and you have excess energy in your body. Your body is going to store that excess energy in the form of, of belly fat. Okay. That's an anabolic process. You have built new fat molecules. Okay. Let's say you decide to get on the treadmill and run, ride your bike, go to football practice, go lift some weights. You're going to burn some calories and then you're going to go through a catabolic process. You're going to break those new fat molecules that you made and you're going to lose some weight. Okay. So within our body, we have a, a catabolic reaction supplying the energy for a dehydration synthesis reaction. So we have what are called couple reactions. Dehydration synthesis will go that way and uh, catabolic reactions will feed the energy for that. All right, let's brush away what we wrote and there's that graphic. So what we have here is hydrolysis using water to break something. Here is our four part polymer. We're going to replace the water that we put in before or that we took out during dehydration synthesis and what's going to happen is the functional groups are going to replace look H2O so there's your water okay and then we have the hydroxyl replaced on one monomer there's our hydrogen back and what we also released once we broke that bond we have released some energy This may be a screencast as you're preparing for your quiz or for your test that you may want to review a couple of times. This is a fundamental concept to chapter two. If you're going to understand how carbohydrates work, how lipids work, proteins and nucleic acids, you need to be a master of how dehydration synthesis works and how hydrolysis works. So before you take some of your quizzes and in your kind of test, I would definitely watch this episode at least one more time possibly too. Okay. Until our next episode on carbohydrates, we'll catch you on the flip side.